viewers, you're once again welcome to the Share My Show. Our guest today is a Pan-Africanist, an educationist, a, an entrepreneur, and he's also the CEO and founder of United Africa for Economic Empowerment. Welcome to the Share My Show, Dr. Mai. Thank you very much. Uh, it is a privilege actually being in your show today. I believe that every opportunity that is granted for individuals to be educated is the best thing that can ever happen to a man. And so I count it a privilege being here. Oh, thank you so much. We're really, we're actually privileged to have you, you know. <laughs> so can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay, uh, to find out about me, I have little to say about me because uh, uh, being a Kumbo Makantoni, uh, I just believe that it is not all the certifications that matters. Yeah. It is what you do for humanity that matters. So I'll talk to you about my endeavors to help humanity. Okay. I grew up in a home where we were basically struggling to live, even though my father was a businessman. Yeah. Uh, I grew up seeing him moving from one country to the other, importing goods and selling them. And that. But at a particular period of time, it seems as if everything, I don't know what happened, that his business got burnt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we practically started living a life of, of beggars. I remember one incident where my our landlady yeah. actually came pull off the door mm. and brought some guys to the room. I can relate to so that experience. <laughs> to, now we still in my mind like it happened yesterday and I said this thing would never happen to me. Oh. So with that kind of mindset I, I grew up with this fighting spirit like we need to make it. And Unfortunately, for us growing up in Cameroon, we never had individuals who could show us this is a path, this is where you need to go through, this is yeah. how you need to pass and attain what you want to attain. We tried several things. I think uh, I started my first business when I was nine years old. Wow. Wow, wow. <laughs> I started selling cigarettes. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I was nine years old and... Uh, I started that one and school was like, okay, I had to stop it. At the age of 16, I started another one again. And the uh, reason being that I told myself I will never be poor. Wow. I can never be poor and I don't like poverty. What a saw, strong conviction. I saw how poverty actually made us to be practically begging. Mm. My father who was a hard working man almost became nothing. It was, I think, I don't know whether it was a shock because the whole market got burned with everything that he had inside, money oh. that he had borrowed and oh. invested. So with that, I can tell you that uh, Mark Anthony is an individual, is uh, a fighter. Wow. And uh, one person who believes that anybody can become anything they imagine or want to become. So from that age uh, to the age 21, when I actually was going to the university, yeah. <laughs> you'll be shocked to hear that I went to the university at 21. Yeah, but that was when I was going to the university. <laughs> it was then that I realized that these are two different worlds altogether. Yeah. Why in the University of Boya? The whole atmosphere there was like, okay, this is a, you need to consume everything you have. Yeah. I looked for a way that I would not need to take money from my parents. I had to start working with MTN. Wow, seriously? <laughs> so I had to, I started selling cards wow. as a student and uh, created a call box. By then, there were no call box. I hmm. think we had one of the first two or three car box that were existing in one of, in Moliko at that time. Wow. That was 2002, 2003. And so with that, 
God permit, we have been able to, as an individual, I manage myself through. And one thing that I really admire about you is the way you've been so intentional about kind of like promoting partnership or highlighting partnerships that are happening in Africa. Yeah. I see you maybe talking about um, actors, Nigerian actors, maybe yeah. collaborating with Cameroonian actors. Why is this important to you? <laughs> you see, in an atmosphere where we are struggling to build a face for Africa, mm. which can emerge, emerge in a, a struggling world, I'll tell you, Africans in this war we find ourselves in are practically slaves in everything that we do. And so for us to come out of slavery, we must stand out. And for us to stand out, we must unite. Oh. And uh, if you look at it, go around Africa, the world, you discover that when uh, a Jew steps somewhere, they don't walk alone. They walk together. And you discover they succeed together. The same thing with the ascetic people. How do you, if you go to an environment, like for example in Cameroon, is there a Chinatown here in Douala? <laughs> yeah, there is. Get to Douche. The Chinese people have a conglomeration of themselves. Mm -hmm. They have a, they want to buy, they go buy from their people. So money circulate in their hands. More. It can go around 21 times before getting to another person. Mm -hmm. But with us black people, we do not have that consciousness that we need to unite, we need to work in synergy, we need to always be there for one another. Mm -hmm. We are rather stabbing one another. I prefer to go buy from a Chinese man than to buy from you. I prefer to promote one thing that is going to promote a Westerner than to promote what will help an African. And that is the wrong aspect of it. So we need to get to that place where we understand that as black people, we are wanted. And as long as we are wanted, we are being used. And I will tell you, for over 400 years, the African people have been building the different civilizations, but their civilization is not built. Africans built America. Africans built Europe. Africans are practically building China right now. <laughs> but what about Africa? We do not know how to work together. So when I see in the film industry, in the entertainment world, I see might be the Nigerians and the Cameroonians working together and I appreciate it yeah. and I want to promote it. When I see musicians, for example, I, I saw uh, 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 Tina the other day mm -hmm. with uh, this lady in East Africa, they're working together, created a beautiful song. It's just a new song, I think it's just three days ago that she dropped it. It is getting to make me feel how oh, Cameroonians are getting into that. So mm -hmm. partnership is everything. Mm -hmm. Partnership, you see, when we talk of entrepreneurship, you can't talk of entrepreneurship without partnership. <laughs> That's the simple truth. When you claim that you are an entrepreneur and you are a boss of yourself, mm -hmm. you are a failure. Mm -hmm. Irrespective of how much you are making, but I will tell you this, when one, two, three, four, five persons come together, put their ideas on something, they will make more money than when one individual trying to do it. Right. Sometimes today we have the name of Dangote in front of every organization. In fact, we want to appreciate that name, right? Yeah. But go behind. Dangote is not this, the lone person owning most of those businesses. He's in partnership. Yeah. One of my mentors, I don't know if you know of Strife, he's Zimbabwean, mm -hmm. but he is in South Africa. Uh, that's an individual that when nothing, in fact, when nobody believed that business, a, a businessman could succeed in Africa, mm -hmm. he came out. How did he do it? Tell me. Partnership. Wow. He had to bring in partners from different areas who could sustain where he could not. He never did entrepreneurship. He never did that. He went and learned technology, which he thought that was the brand, yes. Yeah. But... At the end of the day, he understood that it is not that. The first business he started, he started with his colleagues. Mm -hmm. Where they sat down and said, let's start something. And the three of them sat down and put money. Practically, he ended up with the two of them. Wow. 
but he succeeded mm -hmm. and got to a point where they had to split. The other guy created his own different, different business. And I don't know if you have heard of Econet. Mm. Econet is owned by Strife. Mm. And at the end of the day, I don't know if you've heard of Telecom. Mm. Okay. <laughs> so he is that guy behind. Mm. But it is just a name. There are individuals who have partner behind it. Wow. And that is how we succeed. In Cameroon, we can't actually count any true entrepreneur in Cameroon because we have lone rangers in Cameroon. <laughs> we have individuals. I want to be the guy with the name that everybody knows without anybody walking. I need to be the boss. I call the shots. Sorry, when you call the shots, there are times there are individuals because you pay them, they will not have that boldness to come and tell you this decision you are taking is wrong. And... Uh, Every business strives on decisions. So now, right, when you actually look at um, this partnership, you mentioned the fact that it's like that sometimes we fail to promote our own. Um, our own. Yeah. You see, we fail to promote our own, mm -hmm. right? So what do you think we need to do in order to promote our own? Uh, I think uh, the first thing is we need to start actually pushing out the importance of partnership. Okay. Because like what you're doing now a lot of persons do not know how important it is to produce the Sharma show there is a cameraman somewhere behind so people are watching at you mm -hmm. and i talking but they do not realize that there's a crew behind what this show to happen mm -hmm. that's partnership so we need to make them understand and the fact that we make people to see wrongly See, I'm not coming into a business because maybe I brought in the money and I bought maybe the things that we need to do. I want to use the, 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 the Share My Show as yeah. an example. Maybe the person who brought the initiative bought the instruments they needed. Yeah. But who are the technicians that are going to work? You have to hire them, right? Yeah. But when you hire them and you make them to believe that you hire them, you have to pay them for that. Your business will not strive. But when each of them is entering as a partner, knowing very well that this part is what will bring me the benefits that is going to come from this business. Do you know what happens? Tell me. They don't work because they want to be paid. They work because it is their business. Yeah. So when it is a partnership, it is all of us our business. Yeah. It's not my business. It is true. It will not be at the same level. Yeah. It will not will be at different levels. There are different kinds of partnership. I might not be, I don't want to talk about in that, mm. about that here now, mm. but there are different kinds of partnership. And until an individual understands that, forget it. He'll be working for you for salary. But I discourage people working for salary every day. Yeah. No, no, you don't have to work for salary. You have to own the business. How do you own the business? You have to be a partner in it. And being a partner in it makes you, when you are giving your all, you know you are giving it for your business. Wow. And at the end of the day, we all succeed. Yeah. And let me tell you, you get more when you partner than when you work as a job. Mm. So job seekers are slaves. <laughs> I, I, I want to be sincere. If you are working <laughs> as a, you are working for a job, mm -hmm. You are just enslaving yourself. And that is why I encourage individuals to learn to brand themselves up. Incorporate yourself so that if a business needs to take you in, you are partnering with a business as an expert, not as a job seeker. Okay, that. And they need to know that. Makes as sense. long as you are unable to see yourself as a partner, you see yourself as an employee, I will use you and pay you little. Why? In jobs, when I employ you and I'm paying you, uh, I think out of 1,000%, I pay you about 5% of what you're giving. So if you can give me <laughs> a million francs CFA and I give you 5,000 francs, and you, maybe I, let me even say, raise it up and give you 50,000 francs mm. and you are happy. Did you really make any money? Mm. You made money. 
but it was not yours. You made it for somebody. <laughs> so a lot of persons abuse the pens in the walls of other persons and neglecting theirs. And so the only way for all of us to own that wall is for me to come in as a partner, not as an employee. Mm. Let's take a short break, okay? It's okay. Please, you've been hearing from Dr. Akumbong, Mark Anthony. If you want to hear more, because we are still to talk about money, hey, please, don't go away. After the break, more with Dr. Akumbong. <laughs> If you're just joining us today on the Share My Show, we've been honored to be in the presence of Dr. Akuma Mark Anthony, the CEO and founder of United Africa for Economic Empowerment. Doug, you talk a lot about money. So why is it important to be financially literate? Okay, uh, I'll begin by telling you that a lot of us go through schools. Yeah. And I think even those who learn banking and finance, accounting, they teach them nothing about money. In fact, we go through school from nursery to universities and we are out and we know nothing about money. The only thing that we know about money is what mommy or daddy taught us at home. Yeah. And you know what mommy or daddy used to teach us? <laughs> um, if you have to be rich, you have to work very hard. You have to have good grades in, the sc in school. Then when you come out, you will have a good job. Yeah. That's a scam. <laughs> it's not true, it's not working. It's not working. There was a, in the 1960s, that was working in Cameroon, where when you have, even if it is a first school, you could learn a job. Even if you have, not to talk of somebody who is having a, wow, first degree, yeah. you are a king. <laughs> you have a good job. <laughs> but not today. Today, PhD holders carry placards cards and walk on the street to tell the government of Cameroon that they need jobs. Why should a PhD holder Actually, are you not the one who's supposed to be teaching people how to make great jobs? Okay. And so you go again asking for a job. It means that your education is useless. And so I, as an individual, encourages persons to get to know what money is. Money is not the piece of paper that we, 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 we go handle. It's not a piece of metals that have been shaped and given to omitted and given to you to use. Uh, you see, if you ask, let's say, about, let's go sample 100 persons. What is money? You ask them. You'll be shocked to hear money is a leg tender. That's the definition they gave them in school. Mm. Why were schools created in the first place? Tell me. To create slaves. <laughs> wow. Schools <Duh>. were created <laughs> to create uh, 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 the employment, in fact, employees. That was the purpose of schools. To give individuals a knowledge to work for the government so that you can be brought in to fit in that rat race where from Monday to might be sometimes Saturdays, you go give eight to 12 hours in somebody's vineyard. And at the end of the day, you are tired, you're worried, worried and they give you, uh, should I say crumbs? Mm -hmm. And maybe you are satisfied at the moment, but that, those crumbs, can't take care of your day, you can't take care of your months, you can't take care of it was when you start having kids. Yeah. God, you can't pay your house. Just imagine as a doctor and I'm, I'm lecturing in the university and you give me 350,000 francs, 400,000 francs. 
it's not up to 500 because the Cameroon does not, it's a dream. And I, what will I do with it? Yeah. My house rent, I have to take care of my wife because she takes more of the money than any other person. <laughs> I need to, to, to take care of my kids. How would that money help? So I become a slave. I need to work hard every day. And in order for me to get that money, I need to make sure I repeat that circle over and over and over and over and over and over. And over. Wow. So talking about um, looking for solutions, okay. So you're the CEO and founder of United Africa for Economic Empowerment. What solution are you guys bringing to <laughs> Africa today? <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Yeah. I, as an individual, I have my way of thinking. Uh, like I said earlier, I believe in unity. I believe in people working together. Okay. And that's the primary solution to a problem. And I'm trying to make it real. And so I have a team okay. that cuts across Africa and the diaspora. Uh, we, we have persons in the Bahamas. We have persons in Europe. We have persons in the United States, Southern America, in Asia, yeah. in Africa, that are in the team of United Africa for Economic Empowerment. Oh. We believe that Africa or Africans and not just those that are born in Africa, we believe the fact that it's not because you were born in Africa that makes you an African. It's when Africa is born in you. Uh, we have persons who were born in the Bahamas who have never seen Africa. They are black persons, but their ancestors were carried from Africa. And so oh. this year of Africa being born in them every day. And so we, have, we created that platform to bring them together. And if you look at it, what makes the power of Singapore of China, of Israel. Israel is a tiny nation, but it's one of the most richest nations in the world. I don't know if you know that. Why? That nation believes so much in unity. And the work with the diaspora, wherever they are, the problem with most African governments and leaders is that the moment they see the diaspora, they see the diaspora as a risk. In fact, they are afraid of the diaspora. And they don't want to work with the diaspora. But if you cut out your diaspora, you have cut out a lot of wealth. And so we are looking for a way to unite the diaspora and those here yeah. at home. Why? When they come together. Uh-uh. Africa is going to stand strong, we will merge. And so that is, like I said, is my, our focus. We, of the United Africa for Economic Empowerment, thought that we need to look for a way to unite ourselves together. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the most difficult tasks that exists. I can imagine. Yes. <laughs> to bring Africans to work together yeah. is not easy. Yeah. Why? Because Africans as individuals do not love themselves. Oh. There is hate. We have a lot of hate that has been nursed in us. It is not because you want it. It is based on something that had been well calculated and invested in you for centuries. I say centuries because they've, you are sitting here, you are just a representation of your great-great-grandparents whom the White man came and taught here. They taught them how to hate themselves. And your parents transferred, your grandparents transferred them to your parents, your parents. So that culture goes from one generation to the next. And so we are having a transgenerational problem which we need to deal with. So how far are we still to go? Uh, we have a lot of work to do in that. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of work. It's, it is not a day's task. Uh, but I believe we are going to succeed in doing that. Wow, amazing, amazing. Honestly, it's an amazing initiative. I must say kudos. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. So after the break, more with 
Dr. Akumbong Mark Anthony. <laughs> If you are just joining us today on the Sherma Show, our guest is an educationalist. He's also a Pan-Africanist. He's an entrepreneur. He's a CEO and founder of United Africa for Economic Empowerment. So, Doc, talk to me about attitude. You made the statement that attitude can either break or make us. Uh, you see, most of the times, a lot of persons uh, actually interpret situations from the wrong position. Uh, forgetting to know that what actually counts in every situation that happens is attitude. For example, uh, what do you think about uh, two persons coming in a situation, the mid, uh, let's say for example, an individual who has uh, a lump of wood, maybe selling it for something minor. Yeah. One of them sees wood. Another person sees a great sculpture, something beautiful. Yeah. What actually made them to see the way they see? Attitude. His attitude. What will cause them to actually either lose in what they, the decision they take or gain in what the decision they take is attitude. For example, the person who does not see uh, anything in the wood, he saw just wood, says, after all, I don't use wood. He passes by. The next person based on attitude, identifies an opportunity in the log of wood, yeah. takes the log of wood. Few days after, the same person who does not see anything in that particular log of wood will be willing to exchange his money to get that good uh, sculpture yeah. that has been brought out of that particular wood. In fact, he might spend hundreds of thousands to get what was carved out of the wood. What is the difference between the two people? It's attitude. <laughs> no, amazing stuff there. So, but one final advice for the young people. Like, um, for, let's, one advice for these youths who've just graduated from school and are looking for jobs, let me say so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's not a bad thing to look for a job. I think in this book, I, I said some stuff about the paradigm, the paradigm shift, shift in, entrepreneurship. in entrepreneurship. In the book, I talk about what a job is and what business is. Each one of us has something to give. You has gone to school and you now graduated from the university or maybe you are still to graduate. You have something to give. Yeah. The only problem we have is that we have been prone to believe that the only way to give it is to get a job. It's not even bad to have a job. But I advise a lot of young people, when you go get a job, the purpose of that job should be to help you stand on your feet so that you can be able to face life. You'll be shocking. Makes sense. Thank you so much, Doug. But we have some few questions here for you. Okay. If you don't mind. So you just choose any. Wow. We'll wish you answer three. So you choose uh, any of the questions. Choose three. Yeah. So choose you can start with one. <laughs> yeah. Very, very deceptive. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know, Am I the one to check? Yes, please. You can open it. And feel free. If you don't want to answer, you can always okay. change it. Yeah. The Silma Show question. What will you do if you caught your partner cheating? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Um, okay, okay. This one is really life threatening. <laughs> if I caught my partner cheating, wow, that one is not easy. Uh, one of the things I'll say is, like I talk about attitude always, 
It is not what happens to you that matters. It is what you do with what happens to you that matters. And so the fact that you caught him or her cheating should not mean that maybe you take a wrong decision at that moment because a lot of persons, oh, I don't want to see you again. Maybe you just go, I don't want to see you again. He or she is a human being. And liable to make mistakes. Am I as an individual willing to forgive an individual who makes mistakes? Yes, I do make mine. So there's no mistake that is unforgivable. So am I able to forgive? Yes, I would do. It's true, it's hurting, eh? <laughs> Very hurting. Of course. <laughs> I'm going to forgive. Yeah. That's what I believe I can do. I'm going to forgive. And Try to behave as if it really never happened, but they will always be there. <laughs> so <laughs> I can imagine, right? <laughs> Sun come on there. <laughs> Question but, number two. Yes, please. What are some of your best school day memories? Best school day memories. Ah, let me try to go back to my school years. That's from primary school up to yeah, even that's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, let me start with the primary school. Okay. You can even just cite one, and that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The primary school, I remember. <laughs> uh, I think it was when I used to dash out of school. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been there. <laughs> that used to be good because I practiced that till when I was in upper six. Mine was funny because when I used to do that, actually I used to be considered like a good student. So I'm actually dodging, then the principal sees me on the way, then I greet him on passing. Then he doesn't believe, he always thinks like, oh so no. Maybe you <laughs> yeah. I used to scale over the wall. Oh no, I've not done that. <laughs> so let's. Okay, and so this one should be something good too. Let's hope so. <laughs> Why do you need help with most of them? Hmm. Why do I need help with, with this kind of mindset that I've built? <laughs> Everybody needs help somewhere. I think so. But I don't know if I... Which, where do I need mine? Question is tricky. <laughs> I think I, the area in which I need help in is always on how to, I always have this lack because I feel like I'm trying to make things happen for the world but not for my wife. <laughs> she, because I think most of our complaints is you're always there, 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 yeah. there, but you're never there for me. So yeah. that's, like I actually need help. I think so. Yeah, so I think that's where I need help. Yeah. I'm never really there for her. All right, thank you so much. So now, right, I'm sure people will be wondering how they can get to you. Okay. Yeah. And um, maybe get some of your books too. Can yeah. You? yeah. So, guys. I have uh, some books. Yeah. The first motivational book that I wrote. Yes. You'll be shocked to hear this. How to succeed in 24 hours. In 24? Yeah. That was a book I wrote in 2008. Mm -hmm. How to succeed in 24 hours. And a lot of persons think might be succeeding in 24 hours. It's just, boom, I've made it. No. It's decisions. How to get to put yourself in a place where you can take the right decisions to success. Because yeah. I'll tell you, success is made in twinkle of an eye. Seconds. When you can take the right decision at a particular moment, it takes you to where you need to go to. I wrote other books, but I decided to push in a bit in entrepreneurship. So I have a book, uh, How to Succeed with Money. Mm -hmm. How to Succeed with Money, which I wrote, which uh, I think I should not be boasting about it. Maybe when you read it, you talk about it for me. Okay. Then, uh, came this one, the paradigm shift in entrepreneurship. Yeah.
because I've heard a lot of persons say a lot of things about entrepreneurship which are not true. <laughs> yes, it's not all about owning a business. Mm -hmm. It's not all about being your boss. All those reasons, in fact, the idea behind is good, but the motivational factor behind is greed, selfishness, arrogancy. That's what you see there because I can now have make some I'm the boss <laughs> get arrogant. A true entrepreneurs, if you look at them, you will not even know that they have. Yeah. Why? They never think of how much they can get. They think of how much they can give. And as long as they think of how much they can give, they want to invest everything that comes into their hands. And at the end of the day, You'll be shocked when they succeed in creating what everybody needs. You, let me give a short story. All of us know about Facebook. Yeah. We know Zuckerberg is the creator of Facebook. Yeah. But most of us do not know the story behind Facebook. When Zuckerberg created this stuff called Facebook, uh, one year after, Yao came for it. She wanted to buy it for a billion US dollar. A startup that, wow, one billion dollar. Oh, his investors came and sat, he called them, said, This is what has come. Who? The investors were happy. Wow. He said, This is great money. And he said, Okay, let's have at least a day or two to think over this thing. Then we gather again and make that decision. Now, when the investors went behind and said, this thing, we need to sell it. One billion? Why would they call it one billion? It's not one million francs CFA. Yeah. It's neither one billion francs CFA. One US billion dollars. It's a lot of money. A lot of money. And Zuckerberg had never seen that kind of money. She was just 21 years old. So, one of his investors asked him when he came the next day and told them we are not selling. The guys were shocked and they were not happy because they had all told him that we need to sell. Mm -hmm. We need to make money. That's where investors are. Investors, when they come into your business, as long as it is not theirs, they don't see it as theirs, they want to make their money, they can kill it. And so he said, okay, I am not selling. And this guy said, please, do you know what one billion is? <laughs> he said, I might not know. I don't even know what it is. And he says, do you know what you can do with that kind of money? He said, well, I don't know what one billion is. One thing I know is that if you give me one billion, I'll do back the same thing I've been doing. And if you give this particular Facebook to Yao, Yao will destroy it because he does not know the future of it. I alone knows the future of this thing. Wow. What is that? I'm simply saying from that story yeah. that an entrepreneur is a visionary. Yeah. He doesn't work based on the now. He works based on where he's going to, the future. So Zuckerberg refused to sell. This is how many years from then? This should be about 15 years from then. Where are we today? Billions and billions wow. and millions. Zuckerberg alone is making profits of billions. And he is worth, I think, about a hundred and something billion US dollar. But he never knew one billion a year after his invention, right? Yeah. So the question we should be asking is, what do you want to do with your time? Use it to invest in the right place and that right place is you so we should do self-development and focus our attention on ideas create what we can create work on it don't always think of profit because true profit is i think i defined in that book profit is actually uh, the contribution, so the product, the profits that comes, or say they, 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 they produce, yeah. that comes from a, an idea that you 
contribute. When you contribute an idea, what comes out of it should be profit. Mm -hmm. But if you have not contributed an idea, when you are exchanging goods or might be on services and you think that that's going to give you money, it will give you crumbs. The little mm -hmm. things you get is not actually that. So I'm wow. sure I've spoken a lot today. Oh, thank you. Actually, yeah. it was amazing stuff, you know. So how can people get to you? Uh, you can either get to me directly. Okay. Or if I have a Facebook page, okay. which you can go there and get me if you want to even learn more from me. Okay. Uh, the What's Facebook, the name? Okay. Professor Akumbom is my Facebook page. Okay. Mm, my Facebook account, I think, is my name, Akumbom Macantoni. Okay. And... Uh, also, our organization has a page, United Africa for Economic Empowerment has a page. And there is a number there. Okay. And there is a WhatsApp there. So you can get to me through that, or you get to our office at Bonaberry, Ancien Route, at uh, uh, Petit Pong, around Petit Pong area there. Okay. So with that, but I think the easiest way to get through to me is a call or a WhatsApp. Dear viewers, we were honored to be in the presence of Dr. Akumba Mark Anthony, an educationist, a Pan Africanist, a conference speaker, an entrepreneur, and the CEO and founder of United Africa for Economic Empowerment. Do not forget to subscribe, like, share, a page thank you for always being there we are here because you're there thank you